Hi, I'm Steve from Freefall RC Podcast. Today I'm going to be doing a three-part video series on an OS 105 rebuild. Now in this uh, rebuild, we're going to be doing a bearing change. We're going to be replacing the piston, ring, um, and sleeve. And then we're also going to do is an upgrade. So the 105 I have is a HZ version, and I'm going to be upgrading it to an HZR. So a regulated version. Um, so I have a 105, it's the HZ version. So you'll see that there is no regulator on here. Okay. Um, I temporarily, it was, I was actually completely apart, but I put it back together just to show you how the, um, you know, disassembly process works. Now I left the head off with all the screws in the bag and also the, the back plate or the back cover off and also the uh, glow igniter. So the glow plug, Probably can replace that, so don't even really need that. Um, so we'll go over how to take this apart. All right. So when you do a rebuild, you're taking the head off, you're taking the back cover off. Um, then you need to take the piston out of here. So what you want to do is you want to go top dead center, right? So that means the piston is at its topmost position, and you want to pull the sleeve out. Now pulling the sleeve out, like right now, you can see I just pulled it out. But sometimes it gets hard to pull it out. And what I normally do is take a heat gun and just kind of blow some hot air around here. This is steel while this is aluminum. The aluminum will actually expand quicker than the steel. So it'll actually create a little gap where it just will just slide right out like that. Okay? So when you inspect your motor on what you need when you do your rebuild, um, any deep scoring on the, the sleeve, I would say immediately replace this. Okay? Thing. So once you get that out of there, um, what you do is the, the connecting rod, remove it from your crankshaft by just kind of pulling off of it. So it's on there, let's see, like that, and you kind of just slide it off, and then you pull the piston out. Now, when you look at the piston, you'll see there's a, there's a specific way the piston goes into your motor, the crankcase, and also a specific way that this is facing. So you want to memorize um, how it's orientated. Um, easy way is this cutaway is for your crank. So this is going to be on the forward side of your motor, right? So because it needs a cutaway for your, your counter, um, rotating your, what is this called? Your, basically your crankshaft has, is weighted on this side. So it has to have that cutaway. Um, and then on your connecting rod, what you'll notice is there'll be a little, let's see if I can get into there. There'll be a little like scarring on one side. And that's because it actually hits the back plate, and you'll see there's the same type of um, marring on there. It actually kind of rubs on there ever so lightly when it's in, in you know, when it's in running condition, when it's running. So that that's where you'll see that. Also, another thing to notice, it's very hard to tell, um, but on this side, the bushing. Let me see if I could get that focused in there. The bushing is not, there's no bevel on it. It's like a straight right angle cut here. While on the other side, which is going towards the front of the motor, there's a little bevel here. It's a little 45 degree um, cut. Can I get in there? Do you see that? You see that little 45? You know, when you look at here, this is like a straight right angle. It doesn't have that. Um, that's going to also go to the front, to the crankshaft. That's where it meets to. Now, Okay, now that the piston rods out, to get the crank out, sometimes you can push it out. Sometimes it gets jammed. <clears throat> there we go. And that just popped right out. Okay, I did have to push a little. You know, if you need to, you could tap on it. I try to refrain from tapping on it just because you don't want to mess this up. These are pretty solid, you know, milled steel. So they're pretty um, tough. Okay. So right now I have a crankcase with my carburetor and my um, bearings. You feel the bearings in there? They don't feel that bad actually. This is pretty good. Um, the front, yeah, I mean these are actually really good. I probably wouldn't change this on the regular, but we're going to change it for, for the sake of the video. So what I want to do is like I got these exhaust bolts, no need to have those on there. I'm going to take those off. We're going to take the carburetor off. Okay. 
And when you take the carburetor off, and also when you take the back cover off, there is an O-ring. Um, it's on here right now. You want to make sure you keep that and try to keep that as clean and in pristine condition as possible. So that way you can reuse it. Okay. Also, if there's any gaskets or anything you want to clean off here, try to clean that off. Uh, so we're going to take a 2 millimeter. Okay. Should I have my tools ready? Here's my 2 millimeter. I'm going to take this off. So what this is, is um, the way that the carburetor held is that it, it's a round tube that goes inside a round tube body. And then there's like these two things that are kind of like, let me see if I could cut a cup like this. And they, they basically have a round cutout, but what it is is it pushes force into them and keeps them in place. So I'll show you when I take this out. You take this bolt out, okay? I'll slide the carb out. You could just usually just uh, rotate this a little and kind of work out the seal. Okay, and pop that out. Now be careful, on here it has um, an O-ring. Also it has this thermal insulator it's called. It's like this plastic piece that's epoxied onto here. Um, normally you don't have to replace them or worry about them. You can take them off definitely once or twice. So you want to take these off too. So look, like I was saying before, just get your nail in there and just pop them off. It's like, um, the way it holds it on, it's like these two cutaways and it just kind of pushes, you screw into it and it pushes um, that together and kind of creates like a, you know, it kind of fills in a gap around this and you'll see the markings here to keep that carburetor on there, okay? When you're doing a bearing change, you don't want to heat up anything but the crankcase. Don't leave the carburetor on. Don't leave any of the other components in there. Um, you want this to be just this. Okay? And, you know, because any O-rings, you know, these have O-rings on it. Um, this has an O-ring on it and this plastic insulator. That heats up. What's going to happen is you're going to basically burn out your... Um, you're going to burn those O-rings out. You're going to... They're going to heat. They're going to dry up. They're going to crack. They're going to break. They won't seal. They don't seal. Then you have leaks in your motor. Your motor doesn't run right. Something just it just feels off. All right. So bearing changes. This is the fun part. Not really. I hate doing bearing changes. Um, I'm new to this. All the stuff that I'm doing right now, I've only done it once or twice before. So I do give a little warning. Um, use this instructional video for what it's worth on someone doing it only a couple of times okay it's not that hard though so if you're mechanically inclined i've rebuilt you know automotive motors before short blocks long blocks put them back together um so it's, it's very similar just simplified because it's a nitro motor it's a two-stroke motor uh so here the bearings now the bearings have a certain direction that they're going to come out and a certain direction they're going to go in. Okay. These bearings have, um, how do I say it? They, they have a, the race has like a, has a guide. So you'll see it on this side, right? You see there's like that guide. Another side actually the guide is on the inside where you see the ball. So those are brand new bearings, spins perfectly smooth. Um, this manual that's in here, basically tells you which way this goes in. But just remember, the plastic guide that's covering the bearings want to go into the motor. So when you look at the motor, see that you can see the ball bearings. That's what you want to do. You want to be able to see the ball bearings. Same thing for the front one. It's a little different because it has a cover to keep debris out since that's exposed to, uh, you know, the fan shroud and everything else. You want to make sure that the cover is facing on the outside. Uh, the back bearing pops out this way and the front bearing pops out that way too so these bearings extract out of here like this okay the way i do this is i go to my <laughs> i go to my oven my um you could do a house oven you could do your barbecue grill i'm in my garage my barbecue grill is right outside what i'm going to do is i'm going to heat this up so i just turn it on high put this on the top rack not on the direct fire but on the top rack for probably about five to seven minutes give or take and then when, what happens is um, your aluminum case heats up before the steel bearings do, right? Just like, um, just like when I was talking about the piston liner, this heats up 
uh, the case heats up before this will heat up, which creates a small gap, right? Metal expands when it heats up. And then what happens is then you can just pop out these bearings. Um, it, the case gets extremely hot. Wear oven mitts or some kind of gloves. I actually just kind of um, use a coat hanger. <laughs> And I, I, I'll pull it off the grill like this. I'll just kind of pull it off the grill to say to my finger is a coat hanger. And then I'll bring it in and I'll just kind of go like that on the floor. <laughs> it's kind of funny because I'll just do it on the concrete floor and it'll pop, the bearing will pop right out. As um, soon as I pop that out, I, I'll try to put the bearing back in, the new one in. So that way um, the motor casing is still hot. I don't have to reheat it. Um, you know, you don't want to keep heating, reheating motor blocks, uh, crank cases. I don't know if it does any long-term damage or not but you know, maybe some warpage might happen. And then for this one, uh, for the front bearing, for the front bearing, what I actually do is I take my um, glow plug remover, it's like a dynamite glow plug remover, stick it in there. It's actually the size of the, it's close to the size of the inner race. And I just kind of go like this and boom, bang out that one. Like I just kind of drop it like this or I'll, I'll take it and tap this and it'll come right out, pop right out. Put the new one back in right away um, and hopefully then your new bearings are good they're in there and then you can move on to the rebuilding aspect so I'm gonna heat up my oven and then we'll go outside and I'll show you uh, how I do it on my my grill here okay my barbecue grill the, it's a propane grill I don't use uh, I'm not gonna be doing this on a uh, get some debris out of there on a uh, on a charcoal grill <laughs> you know propane is just easier all right, so we'll be right back. Okay, so I'm out on my barbecue grill. I got that sitting. I'll just put it right in the middle here on the top. And I'm gonna close my grill. Now close this carefully so it doesn't fall off. And I just started the grill, so the temperature's nothing right now. Um, you know, but uh, we'll come back in about five minutes or so and then pull it off. Okay, it's been five minutes. Let's take a look here. Ooh, it's hot. It smells like barbecue. I mean, let's turn this off real quick. Okay, so here's my coat hanger. Um, let's pull this motor off of here. And try not to drop it here. Okay. Okay, let's take a look here. We'll bring it back to the garage here. And see if I could do this without, uh, in, on the camera here. Look at that. I, I didn't even really drop it and it already popped out. See that back bearing? Okay. There's the back bearing. Okay, so for the front bearing, let me get this camera mounted here on my tripod. Okay, and I'm gonna actually take uh, a towel here and just grab it real quick, put that in there, and just give it a little tap out. So there goes the front bearing. So that's out. Now remember, this is really hot, oops, this is really hot, but at the same time, hopefully this is coming out on video, at the same time, I can now get my uh, bearings put back in. So, here's my new bearings, okay, here's the front bearing, just gonna give it a little tap. There we go. I just gave it a little push. It went in. Um, back bearing. Remember, th this plastic side goes in, so I just use this to, to flip it. Ooh, it is hot. Okay. I'm gonna drop the bearing in there. And I just want to make sure that the bearing lines up good. Um, And I'm just gonna give it a push. Now using a towel, gloves, whatever you can will help. Hold on a second, let me just get this. Get this lined up good. So you wanna make sure it's lined up. Okay, so this isn't going in. I, I could feel that the, the case is, I could, I could kind of hold it so it's not as hot. Um, it's also probably because I'm going in on a little angle. Let me see if I can use the, the crankshaft to help me um, angle it better. Kind of get it lined up. Let's 
see here. Okay, because on the crank, that should fit pretty easy. Okay, and then see if I can push this in using the crankshaft. There we go. Okay, so the bearing went in. Okay, now um, I might as well just push the crankshaft in because there's no point. Um, there's no, you know, that's going to be the next step of reassembling anyways. So let's see if I can get this in. Yeah, the crankshaft kind of gets a little funny to put back together. I'll probably use this too. Yeah, it's going in. Okay. Once the crank goes in all the way, um, it'll sit right on that back bearing. And it'll spin very smoothly. Okay. See the cup lines up. This is actually how it gets the air fuel mixture into the motor. It creates that pressure right there from the cylinder going in and out. All right, so here we go. This is good. Still pretty warm. Okay, tools to the side. 